Hi, for this video, I would like to show you my library digitization setup here in the library for our institutional repository. So last year, we started our institutional repository, which houses the theses, dissertations, journal articles, and other research publications of the university. This is not the most sophisticated setup because we are just beginners when it comes to digitization. But I would like to show you some of the equipment and products that I am using. And in case you're interested in checking them out or buying them online, I would include the links to where you can buy them. As you can see behind me is a scanner. I posted this last week on Facebook. A lot of people were curious about it. And I will show you how it works and the other products and scanners that I am using. Before I go to the scanners, of course, having a computer or desktop is important because this is where I edit the scanned images, do optical character recognition, and upload the digitized document to the online repository. So there's nothing special about this computer. It's just one of the old desktops here in the library. But I'm thinking that maybe in the future, I might request something that's more high capacity and can do a lot more tasks than my computer right now. In scanning and digitization, we are using specific software for editing the document and creating a quality scanned material. I posted this scanner on my Facebook page and I was surprised that a lot of people only saw this kind of scanner for the first time. So this is the Fujitsu ScanSnap SV600 overhead scanner. We first had this scanner for our archive section but during 2020, when the pandemic started and we transitioned to online services, we ordered around three more units of this scanner. So this is great because it's an overhead scanner compared to a flatbed scanner. So it's best for books and fragile materials. However, it also has its disadvantages because the scanning quality depends on the book how thick it is or how it lays flat. This is good for fast scanning, but for my own personal preference, if it can be scanned in a flatbed scanner, I try to scan it in a flatbed scanner. But sometimes it depends on the material. It really doesn't come out straight. So I will show you a clip of how the scanner works. After scanning, we have to run the document through a software to make sure that it will extract the correct text. I find it quite difficult to explain what optical character recognition is, but I will do the best I can. So for example, if you scan this document, this is a thesis from the 1950s. So sometimes the page is low quality, there are a lot of unnecessary marks, dirt, and other errors. Then we go through the OCR software. We try to correct the text that the computer has read from the document. So just because you scan a text document, it doesn't mean that it will be accurate. So there has to be some sort of human intervention to check if the computer has read it directly. So that's why we can copy paste the text from the scanned document through optical character recognition. And the software we use is Abi Fine Reader. In my job before this, I was also digitizing books and the scanner I used was just a photocopier scanner, but it has also good quality. So in my last place of work, they had this scanner with DSLR camera. I never got to use that one because the cameras had to be recalibrated. And other than that, I also have a flatbed scanner. This is the flatbed scanner I use. So this is the Canon... Cano scan LIDE 400. If you have large books to scan, this can be really limiting because it's only up to A4 and letter size. But for documents and books that can fit, this can also be used. The price of the scan snap scanner is around 75,000 pesos. But if you are looking for an affordable alternative, this is also good. I checked online about the price range. It depends on the online store you buy it from. 
it ranges from around 8,000 pesos to 15,000 pesos. Personally, I don't like it that much because it feels kind of flimsy. Sometimes when I'm scanning, I always accidentally press these buttons. So I'm not sure why, but there is some kind of difficulty in maneuvering and turning it in order to scan something. When we were populating the repository with documents, we also used those 3-in-1 printers with the scanners. So if that's what you have in the library, that is also good. So if I'm handling a fragile item, I would prefer using the scan snap scanner but if it's just for example a separate document or a loose leaf material i would prefer using a flatbed scanner i will also show you some of the extra equipment i use we also have this external hard disk for backup of the documents and materials aside from saving it on a computer we also save it online and have this one as a backup because for online stuff, you never know what's going to happen. So it's better to have additional backups for the files. Another thing is a CD drive that you can connect with USB. We have some theses and books in CDs. So we need this one so we can extract the document from the CDs. I just copy them so I can save them on our online database. And I also have this small vacuum cleaner. It's a rechargeable vacuum cleaner just to clean the scanners and the mat since dust can really affect the scanning quality. But this is not the most powerful vacuum cleaner, so don't expect a really good result. It's just good for some basic cleaning, but it won't 100% clean all the dust. But it's still useful and I bought it because it was cute. And aside from that, I also have speakers. So in case I'm scanning a really long book or thesis or any other document, I just play music, listen to a podcast or watch YouTube videos while I'm scanning. Because, for example, if I'm scanning... A book with around 100 pages it can be quite long i'll be standing here for a while that's all for my digitization setup so as you can see it's very simple so if you have recommendations or suggestions about what i can improve on in this setup just comment down below and if you have any questions about digitization i will try to answer the best i can so please like comment and subscribe to this channel for more videos about librarianship and visit my website at malitanglibrarian.com.